All right, pre-AP biology. Uh, today we're going to start uh, unit six, which is on genetics. Um, we, we've actually kind of been doing a little bit of genetics. You know, we've been talking about uh, genes and traits and um, you know, our proteins kind of control our, our physical traits and things like that. So we're going to kind of take this a little bit further you know, in this unit. We're going to talk a lot about individual traits and, and just certain ways that things are inherited, you know, from one generation to the next. We'll start off with this, this picture here, which looks kind of bizarre. Um, here you have an individual with six fingers. You know, this is a condition that's called polydactyly. Polydactyly is um, exactly what it, what it shows you here. It's, it's having six digits on each hand. Um, and it's, it's all caused by genetics. You know, it's, 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 it's caused by uh, a protein or a, a multiple sets of proteins possibly uh, that affects you know, finger growth and how many fingers you have. So uh, this individual here is born with six fingers because he has the genetic information to do so, right? So we'll talk a lot about some different types of genetic disorders and things like that as well uh, in this particular unit. Let's kind of review a little bit first before we get into uh, some of the more difficult concepts. So genetics is kind of defined as the study of how traits are passed from one generation to the next. You know, so for example, you know, like um, your blood type, you know, I don't know if anybody knows what blood type they are, if they're type A blood or type B or whatever type you are. But that's inherited from your parents. You know, what blood type you have is determined by uh, what genes your parents gave you. All right, so we're going to study blood typing. That'll be one of the traits that we actually study in this, in this unit. And we'll kind of find out, you know, how those particular genes are actually passed on uh, and how you actually get the traits that you, that you physically have. Um, so the, you know, the, the definition here of a trait is very simple. You know, it's just a characteristic of a living thing. So if I have type A blood, you know, that's a characteristic that I have. If you have type A blood, then we share that characteristic. If you have type O blood, then you and I have that different characteristic. It's not exactly the same. That's what gives us genetic variety, right? Variation amongst our species. Now, what determines your traits? Again, I think we kind of already know this. It's your genes, right? It's your DNA. And we said before, we, in fact, we talked about this the other day, you know, genes are segments of DNA that control specific traits. You know, they control what proteins that we build, and in turn, that governs what our traits are. You know, uh, when it comes to chromosomes, right, you have dozens of different genes on each chromosome. And you have two genes for each trait because you have two chromosomes for you know, each numbered chromosome. You get one from your mom and one from your dad. So, again, if I have to revisit this real quick, I will. But, you know, here's your, you know, here's your, your 46 chromosomes, right? You've got two number ones and two number twos and two number threes. I don't know. Let's just say, for example, um, you know, let's say a look at chromosome number three here, okay? And this is just kind of a cartoonish you know, diagram. It's, it's not like what real chromosomes actually look like, but you know, let's just say that this, this little red band right here on chromosome number three, and I don't know if this is true or not, but let's just say that that little band is responsible for your blood type, okay? But you'll notice that you have two of these chromosomes, right? You have two chromosome number threes. So that means that you have two genes that control your blood type. You know, let's say, um, I don't know, over here on chromosome number seven, let's say this, uh, this little yellow band right here, okay, let's say that that's one of the genes that controls your eye color, right? So we've got two different genes here, you know, on two different chromosomes that can help control that. So what, you know, what, I, want us, what I want us to understand is that genes are on chromosomes. And there's multiple genes on a chromosome. There could be you know, dozens and dozens of them, not just two or three. But because we have two chromosomes of each type, 
you have two number threes, two number fours, two number fives. That means that you have two genes for every trait. All right, so we have to kind of remember that. Uh, I do want to spend a, a few minutes here today talking about a pretty important guy by the name of Gregor Mendel. Now, Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk, and he's kind of known uh, for basically, you know, coming up with you know, all the basic ideas uh, of genetics. Uh, he's kind of known as the father of all modern genetic thought, and, and a lot of the things that we're going to study in this unit are all based on his work. Now, Gregor Mendel, you know, again, he was a monk. He probably didn't have a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, I guess, fun in his life. I don't know. But uh, one of the things that he did was he worked with pea plants. You know, he was a gardener, uh, and he was also kind of a scientist. So even though he was a monk, he lived in a monastery. Uh, he actually did a lot of really good scientific experiments uh, involving his pea plants that he planted in his monastery garden. Now, what's interesting about Mendel, and we're going to go through some of his um, you know, most basic concepts today, is that Gregor Mendel knew nothing about DNA. In fact, DNA hadn't even been discovered yet. You know, they didn't figure out what a double helix was and you know, nitrogen bases and protein synthesis, none of that stuff had ever even been, you know, thought of. So when Gregor Mendel came up with all of his ideas, he basically did it without the knowledge of what DNA actually was, what the actual hereditary, um, you know, information was. All right, so Gregor Mendel, there he is again. You know, why are we, you know, why, why was he using pea plants? I mean, why wasn't he, I guess, you know, if, if, you're, if you're testing uh, I don't know if you're doing genetics experiments, you know, I mean, you might think, well, why not use humans or why not use dogs or, you know, monkeys or something? Well, one of the big things about pea plants is that they're super easy to grow. You know, you don't have to like wait like nine months for the results. You know, if you're talking about human genetics or something, you can, you know, put some seeds in some soil and water them. And, you know, within a couple of weeks, you've got some plants to observe. The traits are really easy to see. I'm going to show you that on the next slide. You know, these plants can easily be bred with each other or with themselves. Plants can, can self-fertilize or they can cross-fertilize. But what Mendel was trying to figure out was, you know, what, you know, what was it that was controlling traits, which he never really did figure out, but how were these traits actually passed on from one generation to the next? You know, what was it? Uh, that allowed things to be inherited in certain ways. So here's some of the um, traits that that Gregor Mendel looked at. You know, just a few things here. There was a lot of other things as well. I mean, for example, he he recognized that um, you know every pea plant, you know, you know he 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 would grow hundreds of pea plants, you know, but every one of them, you know, had either smooth peas like nice round peas, or they were like dented or kind of wrinkly. You know, every plant was one or the other. You know, plants either had yellow sea or yellow peas, or they had green peas. It was one or the other. There wasn't any mix. It was either a yellow pea plant or a green pea plant. You know, there was either green pea pods or yellow pea pods. Um, they had purple flowers or they had white flowers. They had what we call axial or terminal flowers. Um, axial means that on the very end there is no flower and terminal means that on the end there is a flower, if that makes any sense, but whatever. Every plant was one or the other. So, you know, when, when Mendel looked at these plants, he was like, well, you know, why are some of these plants purple and why are some of them white? You know, why are some of them smooth seeds and why are some of them wrinkled seeds? So those were the types of questions that he didn't quite understand. So one of the things that he did was he he, he, he set out to, to, to do a very simple experiment. And all he did was he crossed a couple of plants. Now, this particular trait that he was studying was the pod color, you know. And he knew that in these pea plants, again, there was one or the other. So he took um, what he called, I'm going to write this down here for you. Whoops, sorry, whoops. There's my little highlight, here it is. He called... Um, these plants purebred or pure plants. I'm writing with my finger here, so it's kind of hard. Anyway, oops. 
So this was a pure green plant, and this was a pure yellow. Now, now what made them pure, okay, was that every time he bred these plants uh, with themselves, so you know, like he would take these green these green plants, he would breed them with with themselves, like self fertilize and all the offspring were always green. Okay, so that's what make them that's what made them pure. The yellow pods, same thing, the yellow plants, he would self-fertilize them and you know, he would always get yellow pods no matter what. So that's what kind of made them pure. So what he did was he crossed these two together. And he looked at the offspring to see you know what he would get. You know he figured, yeah, if, okay, if I if I cross a pure green plant with a pure yellow plant, he figured that he would probably get half green plants and half yellow plants. Well, this is what he this is what he found. Okay, he found. I don't know if I can figure this out here. Oh, here we go. He found out that the offspring of these two plants were always green, no matter what. So he had he had what we call the parent generation, and that was the two purebred plants. Then he had what he called the F1 generation. This is the first generation. So these are the offspring of the parents. So this was kind of weird. You know, this was like, you know, Mendel was like, well, how come every time I breed these two pure plants, I never get yellow? You know, that was kind of a question that he didn't quite understand. So then what he did was he took two of these F1s to two of these plants. Now these are these are green, right? So he, he kind of crossed two of these together, and he figured, well, if he's crossing two greens, then he's probably going to get all green offspring, right? Well, this was kind of weird, too. You know, he would cross two of these F1 plants, and he would get mostly green, but he wouldn't get all green. He would get about 25% yellow and about 75% green. So that was kind of weird. He was like, why, you know, why is this happening? So, you know, Mendel, you know, kind of went back into his monastery and, you know, for a couple of years, he really tried to ponder this and figure out what was going on. And eventually he came up with what he called Mendel's Rules of Inheritance, which is probably some of the best biology that's ever been documented, okay? So I'm gonna kind of go through some of the highlights of Mendel's rules of inheritance. Now, here's number one. And this is really not really a surprise, okay? I mean, we kind of know this. It says parents pass information about traits to their offspring. I don't care if it's humans, I don't care if it's monkeys, I don't care if it's plants. The parents pass genetic information to their offspring. Now, how do they do that? You know, they do that through the process of reproduction. You know, if they're sexual organisms, you know, that's two individuals coming together and combining their DNA and passing that on to the next generation. All right, so, you know, just like, you know, in humans, you know, two plants can sexually reproduce and produce an offspring. Now, the second part of his inheritance or of his rules of inheritance are that each individual carries two genes for each trait. So I don't care if it's purple or white flower color. I don't care if it's the shape of the peas. I don't care if it's, you know, tack, uh, a terminal or axial flowers. Every single trait, there's two genes for that trait. Okay? We, we, and we talked about that earlier. Now, here's something that we talked about last week. There's different forms of a gene. Not every form is exactly the same. He gave this a name. He called these things alleles. Alleles are just different versions of the same gene. Now, whenever we're working out genetics problems, we're going to represent alleles with letters. So, for example, okay, we know that in, in pea pods, right, or in, in pea plants, 
there's either green or there's yellow pots, right? So, you know, these, these different colors, we can represent them with a letter. Now, since this is the same trait, right? It's the color of the pods, that's the trait. We're gonna use the same letter, but we're gonna use either a capital or a lowercase letter to represent the two different alleles, the two different versions of the gene. So these letters here represent the alleles. They represent the different versions of that gene. Now, some alleles dominate others. That means they sort of take precedent over the other one. Again, we talked about this a little bit last week. A dominant allele will always cancel out a recessive. So in this case, green allele, you know, the green pods, dominate the yellow ones, okay, always. Now here's a term here, it's called a genotype. A genotype is just a combination of alleles, right? Everybody has, or every pea plant has two, right? So like, here's a combination here, right? If a pea plant has two genes, two alleles for pod color, that's one combination that the plant could have. Okay, here's another combination here, right? It could be little g, little g. Right? This is big, I call that big G, big G. Or the third combination is this one, right? It could have one of each. Now we have these big fancy names that we use to kind of help represent what these genotypes are. This one is what we call homozygous dominant. Homozygous means the same. Okay, so if it's homozygous dominant, it's two dominant alleles. Homozygous recessive, homozygous is same. So we have two recessive alleles. And heterozygous, heterozygous means different. So we have one of each, okay? Now, the phenotype, this is another term, is basically what they look like. It's the physical expression of a genotype. So for example, you know, like let's go back to this genotype right here, right? If that's the combination of genes, the combination of alleles that a plant has, what will it look like, right? Well, it's gonna have green pods. That's what its phenotype is. The phenotype is green. So like, if you look at this chart here, I think this kind of summarizes everything really nice and neat for us. So, for example, a genotype. If it's homozygous dominant, right, then you've got two dominant alleles. And if you've got two dominant alleles in the genotype, then what it's was physically expressed, what it looks like, it'll look green. If it's homozygous recessive, right, it's going to have two recessive alleles, then what is the plant going to look like? It's going to look yellow. If it's heterozygous, that means it has one of each, it's gonna be green. Now, why is it green? Because the dominant allele takes precedent over the recessive allele. It dominates. So that means the dominant color is gonna show up over the recessive color, okay? Now, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna do some examples of what we call Punnett squares. Now on your sheet that you have in class, and if you're, if, you, if you're at home, you can either do this on separate paper or you can um, you know, bust out the note packet that I, I gave to you, you know, whatever you wanna do, but you're gonna have to know how to um, do a Punnett square and, and answer some different types of questions that I'm gonna kind of ask you. So what, what, what we use Punnett squares for is, is to cross two individuals and, and, and see what are the possible offspring that we can have from those individuals, okay? So let's go ahead and cross a homozygous green plant with a homozygous green plant. So let's think about this for a minute, right? We first have to figure out what our parents' genotypes are. Well, if they're homozygous and they're green, right, this is gonna be the genotype of parent one. 
And the other parent is the same thing, right? So all you're gonna do to do a Punnett square is you've got, you basically have this box that's kind of divided up into four squares, right? You're going to take one parent. I don't care which parent you take. I'll just I'll say parent one here. You're going to put his alleles on this side. And the other parent is going to go on the top. Right? So we have two letters on the top representing one parent and two letters on the left representing the other. And all we're going to do is just fill in these squares you know, based on you know these letters that are around the boxes. So, for example, in this first square, Right, we're going to take this letter and we're going to take this letter. We're going to put them in there. Okay, in this square here, we're going to put this letter and this letter. So that's what goes in here. In this square, this letter and this letter, and in this square, this letter and this letter. So you can see quite easily that the only offspring that these these parents can have are individuals who are homozygous dominant, right? It says here 100% are big G, big G, and 100% of them are green, okay? These are, are basically ratios. You know, it's basically four out of four or 100%. You know, this is what we call the genotypic ratio. And this is what we call the phenotypic ratio. It just tells us the colors, okay? So that one's kind of an easy one. Let's try this one. Cross a homozygous green plant with a homozygous yellow plant. Okay, so let's take a look at our parents here, All right? This is homozygous green, and this is heter or this is a homozygous yellow. So let's put one parent on one side, the other parent on the other side. And let's simply just fill in the boxes, okay? You'll notice every box looks the same. So before I give you the answers here for the ratios, let me ask you this. What do all of these offspring look like? They're all green, right? So remember Mendel's experiment you know, when he had the pure green and the pure yellow. Remember in that first generation, he got all green? Well, that's, that's, th this explains that. You have a homozygous green, that's a pure plant. Pure is homozygous. And you have a homozygous yellow, that's a pure yellow. So that's what we're crossing here. And all the offspring are gonna be green. So you get 100% of your offspring are heterozygous and 100% of your offspring are green, right? So that should be pretty easy. Let's try this one. Cross a heterozygous green plant with a homozygous yellow plant. So think about your parents, right? Heterozygous, so there's your first parent, and then homozygous yellow. So there's your second parent. So let's put those parents on either side. It doesn't matter which side you put or, or where you, just put one parent on the left and one parent on the top. All right, it doesn't matter which parent goes where. All right, and again, all we're gonna do is fill in the, fill in the squares. Okay, now you will, you will notice one thing and I, I, I do wanna stress this. You know, whenever you have one of each, whenever you have the heterozygous um, genotype, the capital letter always comes first. The lowercase letter always comes second. Okay, so remember that. But now I'll take a look at your offspring. So now we've got some different combinations here. You know, so if I said, you know, genotypically, you know, give me a ratio of these offspring. Well, you would say that 50% of them are heterozygous and 50% of them are homozygous recessive. Or you can write one half and one half if you want to, or you can write two to two if you want to write a, like a like a ratio. You know that's fine too. Or you know if you want to reduce it, you can even say one to one. I guess that'd be fine. Um, but phenotypically, you know we would say fifty percent green, fifty percent yellow. Okay, so phenotypically you're showing me or telling me you know what colors, you know, 
What's the expression? All right, last one here. This is Punnett square number four. Here we're going to cross two heterozygotes. So you're going to cross a heterozygous with another heterozygous. So here's your two parents. Okay. So again, let's fill in the squares. And you'll notice here, we've got some interesting combinations here. So look at these four squares. Okay. You know, this one here we would say is green, right? These two here we would also say green, but these are heterozygous. Right, this one is not, then this one would be yellow. So if you had to, you know, give me your ratios, you know, genotypically you would say 25% homozygous dominant, 50% right are heterozygous, and then 25% are homozygous recessive. Now, phenotypically, you would say 75% green and 25% yellow, right? And, and that takes us back, I'm, I'm going to fast forward through this real quick, that takes us back to this. Remember his experiment, you know, whoops, darn it. Remember he crossed a pure green with a pure yellow. That means his offspring, you know, these, these ones here, the, the F1s, these were all going to be heterozygous. And then he crossed two heterozygous ones, right? So if we cross two heterozygotes, we get that three to one ratio. You know, three greens for every one yellow. That's our F2 generation there. But, you know, basically Mendel proved you know, how this inheritance occurred, okay? So that's kind of a big deal. All right, now back to this, you know, what can Punnett squares tell you? You know, Punnett squares can tell you the parents' genotypes, right? You can figure that out. You can also figure out the parents' phenotypes, right? You can tell that by looking at the, at, at the Punnett square. It also tells you the probability, you know, the likelihood, the chance, of certain genotypes and phenotypes amongst the offspring. Now, I want to be really, real careful with this because, you know, I want to go back to I'm going to go back to a problem here, like like this problem right here. Okay. So let's say that these two parents, you know, mated and had some offspring, you had some baby plants. You know what this is telling us is that what's probable is that 75% of the plants are going to be green and 25% are going to be yellow. So let's just say that they had 100 plants, 100 baby plants. Does that mean that 75 of those 100 plants will be green and 25 of them will be yellow? It doesn't mean that, okay? It tells us that that is what's likely to happen, what is probable. But it doesn't always tell us that's exactly what will happen. And we'll talk more about that you know, in our next lecture. What Punnett squares can't tell us, they can't tell us the number of offspring that are going to be produced. You know, Four is not the limit of how many offspring that those plants can have. It doesn't tell us the actual number of genotypes and phenotypes that we can get amongst the offspring. Again, it just tell us, tells us what is likely to happen. It doesn't tell us what will happen. You know, for example, if I said, um, I don't know, two adults, two, two, two humans are gonna have a baby. What's the chance that the baby is gonna be a boy? Right, you would probably say 50%, right, one half. So does that mean if they have six children, three of them will be boys and three of them will be girls? It doesn't mean that, right? So again, Punnett squares tell us about probability. It actually going to happen. All right, so I will leave it there. Okay, there was a lot today. Uh, and I will talk to you guys uh, in class uh, on the next class period day. All right, guys, have a good day. Take care.